Nate, I'm pretty sure we don't advocate for video game remakes or movie remakes that often on this channel. I mean, we love some of them, things like Medieval, Demon Souls. There's there's a lot of different remakes that are very good, but you run the risk of really messing up something that was good in the first place. We were actually looking back at the Kingdom Hearts series. There's actually a few games that I think really need a remake, and the one we wanted to talk about today is 358 Over Two Days, or as they call it online, <clears throat> which I've never heard anyone pronounce it this way at all. Three, five, eight days over two. Literally no one calls it that. I've always called it three, I always usually just call it 358 because yeah. I just don't want to deal with it. I call it 358 divided by two days, but I don't even so know So you're doing correct. math. You're just doing well, that, math. Well, that's what that symbol you're is. You're like Xehanort. It's, it's a divided symbol. They're going to find your heartless lab where you've been doing your, okay. your heart math with this. But yeah, uh, we wanted to talk about this today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We're trying to cover Kingdom Hearts more often. This is one of our favorite series. And this game covers one of my favorite characters that I never... Actually, three of my favorite characters, but... One of them I never actually expected to like when he was introduced, which is Roxas. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I think is really frustrating about this game is that it is locked behind the original DS. Really, when you look at the when you look at the game itself, you can see the cutscenes now on the PS3 or on the PS4 collections. But the problem I have with this game is that you can still watch all the cutscenes, and I understand that to people like Nomura probably and Square Enix and stuff. That was probably the best they could do. It's going to be hard to remaster a DS game for PS4. But it's not the same. You know, this is meant to be an interactive story, an interactive medium. Just watching the cutscenes is very odd because there'll be like a Heartless pops up. And then they'll give you like two text boxes saying, and then you beat the Heartless. Right. And then it'll jump to the next cutscene. It's very non-intuitive versus playing the game. Well, and even some of the cutscenes are like, Hey, you beat that Heartless. Nice. All right, now we're in Neverland. Yeah, exactly. And you're kind of like, okay. Yeah, they jump forward. Well, and this is one of your favorite Kingdom Hearts games in terms of story. Yeah, well, and also in terms of just the game itself, too. Like, I, for a while, I never actually owned Kingdom Hearts until I got the PS4 version. This was my Kingdom Hearts. Like, I had this game. I played this game a lot. But there's also just so much to love about this game, too. Like... Not not only just the story, but like the worlds itself I thought were really cool. This game introduced the Beauty of the Beast world. You can mm -hmm. go to Beast Castle, which was used in later games as well. And also I thought one of the most interesting things about this was actually Neverland. It wasn't the Captain Hook's pirate ship. It wasn't Big Ben. You could actually go and explore other areas of Neverland. They like can go onto the island and and go to like the Native American camp and there's other things you can do there, but um, can you sing the song? You can actually participate in the song. Oh, nice. You but can you can be a choose racist. not to. You can choose not to. Depends if you want to do the racist playthrough or the non-racist playthrough. One thing that you go back to, and I had forgotten about this actually until we were looking at this game again, is Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. I, I had forgotten you actually go back here because one thing I've been kind of thinking since Kingdom Hearts 1 is where did that go? Like it's just right. not important anymore. And it's interesting that you actually got to go back there here, and I don't know, I, I wish that they would bring this to modern consoles with modern graphics. So you don't have to change the gameplay that much. I Gameplay was fine. Yeah, There's because... nothing wrong with it. If you look at Birth by Sleep, they didn't change the gameplay to bring it to, you know, the PS4 or PS3. Yeah. Really all they did was they made the game prettier, mm -hmm. and they made it maybe respond a bit better because it's in a higher frame rate. Other than that... It's the same game. I don't understand why you couldn't essentially deliver the same gameplay that 358 had, but with modern graphics basically looking like Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't expect this to be Kingdom Hearts 4. Right. But the reason that we advocate for this is because this is necessary to understanding the story. Yeah, when I played through this game, I hadn't played Rechain of Memories till actually kind of recently. But I remember, I remember playing the game when I was a kid, and I remember seeing stuff like... Uh, Axel being like, yeah, I'm going to Castle Oblivion. Sorry, Roxas, I'll be back. And then Roxas is going through like his own turmoil or something of where's Axel going or, you know, whatever's going on. Yeah. And I remember just kind of playing and being like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. But then when I played Reach In and Memories, I started to realize these games actually are together. Mm -hmm. Like when Axel says, hey, I'm going to Castle Oblivion, you play through Reach In and Memories, here Axel appears in Castle Oblivion. So you actually know what happened like five seconds before that. If you played 
358. Uh, yeah, days they, over two. Yeah, they, uh, they take place concurrently. I mean, yeah. this is kind of taking place during the end of Kingdom Hearts One and during the duration of Chain. Yeah, the thing is that you need this game. I mean, like you need this to fully understand Namine. This starts to actually explain the original Ansem, like the real Ansem. Riku's storyline is actually expanded on here too, because you have Chain of Memories where he makes his way through Castle Oblivion, but then he leaves, and the stuff he's doing is taking place near the end of 358. Yeah, yeah, and also uh, it's necessary to understand Roxas too. Yeah, no kidding. Like if you if you just played Kingdom Hearts. Rechain and Kingdom Hearts 2. You get to Kingdom Hearts 2 and it starts out with you playing as Roxas. And I'm gonna be honest, that is like one of the most boring parts in any Kingdom Hearts, the beginning of 2. Well, I really I like, liked it. I like Roxas, I like Twilight Town. I really liked it. <laughs> okay, I guess my point that I'm trying to make is if you just played that and you only saw that section, you would be like, one, who's Roxas? Why am I playing as him? Two, this is kind of boring, but 358 actually expands on Roxas as a character and makes him really interesting. So then by the time you get to 2, you're not like, wow, who's Roxas? You're like, well, I already know who Roxas is. I like Roxas. Yeah, it's you an have awesome an character. Investment. Yeah. I remember when I played this as a kid and I hadn't played 358 because I didn't have a DS when that came out. That's a big problem I've had with Kingdom Hearts in the past is they're locked behind different systems. It's much less a problem now, but 358 and Coded still are. Yeah. Like, whether people like that or not. And then you have the movie, but that's at least included in the, you know, collection. Mm -hmm. I actually played two without playing Chain of Memories originally. Yeah. Because I didn't know Chain of Memories <laughs> I, was a I thing. Too. I was a child. I did too. <laughs> and I didn't have a handheld at the time. And I remember you get to it and it's like, thank Nomine. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> like, right. what are you talking about? And then they start to reveal, like, you got your memories back and everything, and they give you like a, a TLDR of it in Kingdom Hearts 2, but once I actually got to play these games and see the story of them, like Chain and 358, it's like, oh, this is a pretty big chapter mm -hmm. in there, and you are really jumping ahead. I mean, at the very least in Riku's storyline, almost ridiculously far in his character development. Yeah. Because a lot of his character development, if you don't play these, it just happens off screen, whereas you get to see it in these games. Mm -hmm. Same with Roxas, same with Xion. And I would say, too, until Kingdom Hearts 3, you could get away with skipping some stuff. So, for example, 358, it would make the story not as good, mm -hmm. but I think that you could play and understand the series without 358. The problem is when you get to 3, a lot of the emotional payoff is things from previous entries in the series, including 358. And I think it's a little bit of a weird expectation to expect players to sit through all these cutscenes, these disjointed cutscenes, and watch them, but not allow them to play the game that you're saying is necessary for the continuity of the story. Yeah, it's kind of dumb. It's backwards. It would be like Hideo Kojima releasing Metal Gear Solid 5, mm -hmm. but say like Metal Gear Solid 4 was on the original Game Boy Advance and he was like well I guess you'll have to watch a let's play right, it's like, it's well, like okay, okay but like why would you make a PS4 sequel to a game that was on the Advance that's kind of how I feel about the PS2 PS3 and PS4 sequels to games that were on the original Advance and DS with Kingdom Hearts that's why you need to bring this back and plus I really do think these are characters now that are going to matter again a lot. And without that tragedy and that backstory being interacted with as much, I don't think it has the same impact either. Yes, you can watch the cutscenes, but you have to admit, even watching a Let's Play, if you watch the gameplay of something happening, that's a little more impactful for a story than it is to just watch cutscenes only because it makes it flow more fluidly. You see how a character gets from point A to point B. You can have emotional struggle with Roxas, but you see physical struggle too then. And there is something else worth mentioning with this that's something, it, it addresses a thing that I have with the whole series, which is I wish there was more playable characters in the Kingdom Hearts series. Like I yeah. love Sora, but I think that other than Fragmentary and you know dream drop and i would say birth by sleep and uh chain which chain focuses on riku as well 
there's such a focus on Sora as the playable character and not on a lot of other people. You can play as so many characters. You could play as like all the organization, even Xemnas and Mickey in this game. Yeah. In the in the multiplayer mode, not in like the base, you know, story game. But they added on a separate thing that was like a multiplayer mode. That's not like it's like a really difficult thing to get to, by the way. It's just you doing missions from the story but you have the option to do them with friends. Didn't you or say you, you can could, just do them by yourself? Yeah, you said you could like just load into that it's not playlist, but that that menu yeah. and play a mission as Zemnis. Yeah, you can play as anyone. Zemnis, any Zigbars, Alden, you can do any of them. You you have this thing being necessary to the story, especially of Kingdom Hearts 3, and I'd argue now 4. And the organization's very, very important to that overall story and it's frustrating to have these things matter so much but most modern players can't really play it easily yeah and plus the other expectation is i know you can say well just get a ds well yeah i mean i like the ds but let's be honest here most gamers are not wanting to like sit down and pull out a ds in 2022 like people just aren't wanting to buy one yeah i mean is it's well first off they're also hard they're not hard to find a lot of them are broken yeah a lot of them are broken i know we went through three ds's yeah because the hinges break yeah the hinges break just from use that's the problem even if you're not abusing the console i don't know it's it's a weird expectation to me the thing about the ds is unless you have a ds or a 3ds you can't play ds games you can emulate them you can emulate you can't play them just how they're normally meant to be. I think it really sucks when you lock experiences behind old tech and never bring them back, but you still reference them. They don't have an easy way to play that. And I think that when you hit the point where you're just requesting players to watch a cutscene compilation or go watch a Let's Play. Which is like four hours long, by the way. I think you kind of made a mistake. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, consider those things. They mean a lot to us. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about this game, about the series. We're going to be making lots of videos about this series and other RPGs going forward. But I did want to say, if you want to support this channel, there are different ways to do it as well. We do also have our own store, CosmoBunny.shop. This is an awesome website. I absolutely love it, where we actually make one of a kind or extremely limited depending on our access to resources resin pieces from repurposed comic books magazines manga and here's what that means you might think well what kind of what kind of monster cuts up comic books these are comic books these are manga that are damaged they are being clearanced out sometimes given away by local shops in our area and sometimes unfortunately they don't even end up in the recycling in some places they just end up in the trash so instead of going to a landfill what we do is we take these we make really cool pieces out of them for your home whether they be trays whether they be coasters maybe they are even bigger coasters keychains bigger keychains you're getting you're probably getting the picture here all right we don't just do it we do it big that should be our that should be our little uh, little catchphrase. I'm sure somebody already has it, but we make all kinds of fun stuff with that. And you know that means that tons of different series of things will show up on that website because it's not really about the series. We're not going out of our way to find that. We are taking these things, repurposing them, making cool stuff out of them, and then you know what we do? We recycle the rest of the paper that we don't use. So it's a bada bing bada boom win all around. And also Jill, my wonderful wife makes handmade jewelry she makes bracelets these bracelets are very very beautiful there's a lot of stuff that she's been working on over there sometimes i help with designing bracelets too i know you might think what jay fashion icon yes absolutely we're going there i'm basically zoolander but with none of the money so we've been working on that quite a bit all kinds of fun stuff over there she even makes things like earrings she makes necklaces wonderful things are happening over there and i hope you'll check it out because that means the world to me it's honestly one of my favorite things we do it's been a very nice creative outlet for me and i love it very much and we have a discount code which is djay123 which you can use for 10 percent off your first purchase and that same code works as a fortnite supporter creator code maybe you're like i don't have much money you know i'm not gonna go and buy a, a coaster. I live in a, sh a shoe box that would take up 12% of my living space. I totally get it. So maybe instead 
you want to support us by buying something on Fortnite you were already going to buy, but you put the supporter creator code in, DJAY123. We have several other channels which are linked in the description down below. My wife obviously does her own channel, Magical Jill. She does anime stuff over there. You might be interested in that if you like Kingdom Hearts. And we actually have a channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through games. We're actually in the process of playing through Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories right now. We previously played through Kingdom Hearts 1, and I think we're going to start Final Fantasy 7 Original soon. So lots of fun stuff. I hope you'll check these things out. It means the world to me, and I really do appreciate you watching this video. Have a fantastic day, and as always, everyone, stay shway.